What is going on everybody? This is Johnny with Sierra Whiskey Co. That felt weird. I did it with my left hand. I always do it with my right hand. No jokes. What is going on everybody? This is Johnny with Sierra Whiskey Co. And today we are going to show you how to bore sight your rifle the best way. Now there are a ton of little gadgets and gizmos out there. Stuff that you stick in the end of your barrel and then you know lasers that you should throw in your chamber they're all a damn waste of money we're going to encourage you to do it the old-fashioned way but first what is bore sighting bore sighting is a method to rough out your scope to get your rounds on paper it will save you a lot of ammunition in the long run that being said, some of the tools meant to help can end up costing you more ammo, thereby defeating the purpose. Back when I used to work at an optics company, I could tell immediately when someone was using a laser bore sighter and was having trouble, because they always ran out of elevation or windage travel. Normally, it was because they were doing it in their basement, and the wall in which they were flashing the laser on was just across the room. Why is this a problem? Well, you see, it comes down to how turret adjustments work. At 100 yards, one MOA is worth 1.047 inches, but we'll use Shooter's MOA and round it to an inch for easy math. At 200 yards, that one MOA is going to be worth two inches, and at 300 yards, that one MOA is now going to be worth three inches, since it's an angular unit of measurement. That being the case, the same one MOA is going to be worth a half inch at 50 yards and a quarter of an inch at 25 yards. If we have a scope with MOA adjustments and the click value is one quarter MOA for each click, that is worth a quarter inch of movement at 100 yards. That same adjustment will be worth one eighth of an inch at 50 yards, one sixteenth of an inch at 25 yards. If you have someone trying to bore sight at 10 feet, those click adjustments are worth something like 1 128th of an inch, or worse. What will happen is, you will run out of elevation and windage before you even get close to having your reticle over your laser. That's why laser bore sighters suck. Also, if you try to use them at distance in broad daylight, the sun usually washes them out pretty bad. Other bore sight tools work just fine, but they still cost money, and typically don't work well if you have a muzzle device on. The old school way to do it is foolproof and costs nothing. And here's how to do it. Step one, place a target down range. Step two, pull your bolt from your gun. If you're using an AR, just take your upper off completely and pull your bolt. With an AR, we usually recommend a 50, 200, zero, so 50 yards is good. But if you're going to be zeroing in at 100 yards, just start at 100. Since we're using this RPR, we have to keep it folded to see down the barrel. Step three, place your rifle so it will not be disturbed while you are adjusting your turrets. Bags really help in this situation. Step four, there's a few ways to do this part. You can use a small object at a distance, you can use your target bullseye, or you can use the corner of your target to quarter bracket a quadrant of your barrel. Adjust your setup so that the object, center of your bullseye, or corner of the target are in the very center of your barrel or bore axis when looking through it. Step five, without disturbing your rig, look through your scope and adjust your turrets until your reticle is pointing exactly where your bore is pointing. Step six, Double check to make sure your bore and reticle are pointing at exactly the same thing or as close as possible. Step seven, shoot a group, or if you're comfortable with your skills and setup, you can just shoot one or two. Keep in mind, if your barrel isn't warmed up, your cold bore shot may throw off your data slightly. Step eight, Use your reticle or measurements from your target to make an exact measurement for correction. Then, dial in your correction. Step 9. Shoot a group and verify. After confirming zero, I took the time to run a little box test, where I shot at the center of the target, dialed 
two MRAD up, then two MRAD over, then two MRAD down, and then two MRAD left, completing the box. This simple test can confirm that you're zeroed and also your scope is tracking properly. It's worth the time and ammo to do it once you get your rig set up. center of this target still eludes me. For the tracking test, I have one <laughs> directly below and one directly above. That is what it is. But, not the best I've ever shot, but uh, the tracking test seems to be pretty box-like. The two MRAD up, two MRAD over, two MRAD down. So, all in all, not terrible. This one's a little bit wonky. Well, that is how you can bore sight the old fashioned way. Now, I've had plenty of times where I can get just a few rounds zero on something. It's quick, it's effective. If you haven't tried it, we highly recommend it. You don't have to spend all your money on all these gizmos and gadgets. Really? It's just a waste. That being said, it doesn't work for everything. It's not going to work for like a lever action or a big revolver if you're trying to put a scope on there and sight it in. However, it does work for most things and it works pretty damn great. Do us a favor and if you've enjoyed this content, go ahead and tickle that like button. You might as well subscribe while you're at it. And until next time, Need some more raspberries. Or right. keep on rocking in the free world. And I'm gonna keep eating these raspberries. Ras raspberries. I'm gonna eat these raspberries. They are delicious raspberries. And I did not realize that they are all over our land out here. So, you know, things work. Things just work sometimes. Life is amazing.